Welcome everyone, this is Eric Frazier from the marketing team at FileMaker and I'm your host for today's FileMaker Go in Business web seminar, giving you a real world look at how Berkeley College of Music and their team are using FileMaker Go to benefit their organization. Also joining us today is Ryan Rosenberg, Vice President of Marketing and Services at FileMaker. Before we get started, I'd like to cover just a few housekeeping items. We strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, you can contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Again, that number is 888-259-8414. On the next slide, I'd like to cover how you guys can answer or ask questions today in the presentation. Go to your control panel and choose the questions area, enter your question, and hit submit. And we will cover as many questions at, as time will allow at the end of our presentation. With that, I'd like to introduce Ryan Rosenberg. He's our Vice President of Marketing Services at FileMaker, and he will briefly talk about the FileMaker product line. Ryan? Thank you, Eric. Yes, I'm delighted to be able to talk to you all today. Thank you for coming to the webinar. First, I'd like to give you a brief overview of the FileMaker product line. The FileMaker product line consists of uh, clients as well as servers and also an important part that runs on the iPad and iPhone. But it all has one main purpose, which is to help you to create custom solutions for the iPad, the iPhone, for Windows, Mac, and the web. Now I'd like to talk for a minute about the iPad and the iPhone because you're going to be hearing a little more about that later in our case study today. So I could just switch to the next slide. To run a FileMaker solution on the iPad or iPhone, you need to download the free FileMaker Go app from the iTunes App Store. Now, the nice thing about this is the FileMaker databases that you create will just work. Even, of course, the screens will just work. You'll be able to see your information. But beyond that, you'll be able to get access to the underlying business logic or automation that you put in. For example, scripts that you might implement or the relations that you set up. Even going back to a server and accessing SQL sources will work through the FileMaker Go interface. And of course, security is built right in yeah, through the FileMaker Go interface. However, you may not want your database to just work. You may want to take full advantage of the iPad and iPhone. And the good news is FileMaker Go is definitely designed for that as well. Um, it's, it comes with a full touch interface. That means that controls and menus are customized for the iPad or iPhone. And things like gestures, being able to double tap, for example, is supported on the device. Furthermore, you're, you'll be able to take advantage of iOS-specific features, such as the signature capture, or being able to use the camera on your iPad and iPhone to capture images, or uh, being able to use location to find out where you are when you capture key data. Now, speaking of location, it's, uh, it's quite likely that if you're using an iPad or iPhone, you may go on the road. You may be in many different locations. So the good news is that there's a, um, a lot of ways to access your central data when you're on an iPad or iPhone. First of all, you can simply open your databases remotely. So if you have a solution on a FileMaker server, you can use a FileMaker Go on an iPad or iPhone and just connect to that database, be able to see your data, run your solution. Alternatively, you can do a, a, a simple integration by simply emailing databases out and having people open them remotely, update them, and send them back. And there are lots of intermediate steps. Many developers implement a sync model where certain records are taken offline worked on offline and then put back later when they're updated. Many different ways. And of course, given the flexibility of this platform, I think it won't surprise you that there are many different ways in which customers are using FileMaker to create amazing solutions. Here are just a few examples. For example, you'll see um, Benetton using FileMaker to do retail inventory. Or you'll see FileMaker helping improve operations on the Austin Convention Center exhibit floor. This is a place where they have giant uh, trade shows and conventions. They need to set up all those booths and, and, uh, and, and, and run electrical lines and stuff, and they manage all that with a custom FileMaker solution. You'll see organizations, a lot of medical work, where you have secure information being accessed, such as patient records, while nurses are going around from hospital to hospital. It's not just about larger organizations, too. Small businesses use FileMaker all over the world. So, for example, you'll see a, a Seabreeze Farm. This is a, 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 a small farm, farm up in uh, near Seattle, Washington, that uses FileMaker for everything, both managing production of custom cheeses as well as uh, managing a point-of-sale system for when they sell, sell their, um, their uh, goods and services. So, 
FileMaker is a very flexible platform. You'll see many different uses. If you want to see uh, some of these uses, go up to the FileMaker website. You'll see lots of case studies. But today, we have a real treat for you, a fantastic story about the Berkeley College of Music. And um, to do that, I want to introduce uh, Damien Bracken, who is from the Berkeley College of Music. Damien was born in Ireland, actually, and he's a graduate of Trinity College in Dublin, where he was awarded a Master of Arts uh, with focus on music composition. Now, he has gone on to 27 years of experience in higher education, and currently he's the Dean of Admissions at Berkeley College of Music. By the way, Berkeley is one of the top music schools in the country. In fact, it's one of the top music schools in the world. Uh, he's a composer and a pianist, and he has a very broad and diverse experience in the music industry. He's been a performer, he's been a producer, an arranger, a songwriter, and a composer. He's also a technology enthusiast, as you will find out in a minute here, and he's innovative in the way he applied his technology. He's a passionate music education professional. He believes in the value of music to society, and he's using FileMaker to help achieve those ends. So I'd like to now turn this over to Damian Bracken. Thanks so much, Ryan. It's a pleasure to be here um, to talk about my experience with FileMaker uh, over the last several, I think as, as many as 28 to 30 years, I've been using uh, FileMaker Pro uh, in my capacity as an administrator at Berkeley College of Music. Let me just give you a little bit of background about Berkeley. Um, it was founded in 1945, and the concept of, of the school was to break from uh, the classical Western tradition and teach music through the music of the time, which in those days was bebop and jazz music. Most of the studies happening at Berkeley in that day were um, teaching professional musicians how to arrange for big band, and then they would go out onto the road and, and uh, get additional gigs as, as arrangers. Um, but since then, we've expanded greatly into a school that offers as, man, as many as 12 different majors, um, all offering a bachelor's of music degree. You can study performance, film scoring, songwriting, jazz composition, music business, music theory, uh, I'm sorry, music therapy, um, and many others. Uh, while we originally started out um, in the Back Bay in Boston, um, we since then have opened a new campus in Valencia, Spain, um, offering master's degrees in film scoring, in performance, in business, um, and uh, we also have an online um, degree program uh, Berkeley Online, which offers several certificate programs and uh, uh, individual courses um, covering a wide range of, of topics around music composition and performance and production. Um, we are planning to launch our first undergraduate online degree in September 2014, so we're very excited about that. But in terms of our brick and mortar facility, um, we have more than 9,000 undergraduate and graduate applicants annually. Um, and one of the most important things about how we review our applicants for admission to Berkeley is what's called our audition and interview process. So every applicant to the college is scheduled for an audition and interview at one of more than 150 sites throughout the world. Um, we have teams out on the road constantly um, uh, auditioning and interviewing, and FileMaker plays a, a critical role in capturing all of the data that we ultimately use to sit down with the Board of Admissions and select our class on an annual basis. And you'll be hearing more about that in this presentation. When I um, first uh, began to oversee the admissions operation at Berkeley College of Music, um, at the time it was a very manual, paper-driven process, very labor-intensive, um, as you can imagine, very error-prone. Um, essentially, we were using hard copy files for every applicant. Um, it was difficult to track um, application volume, the measure, um, and measure the quality of applications coming into the college. Um, and I knew at that point that I needed to come up with a solution um, that would help us 
manage the data that we need to capture, do a more effective job of capturing the data in the first place, but also once we've captured the data, tracking it, measuring it, reporting on it, um, and using it to make good decisions for the future. Um, we, at the time, we our enterprise system um, was uh, being widely used across the campus, so we took a look at that. We also took a look at products like Microsoft Access. Um, eventually, I was introduced to FileMaker um, through someone at the college who, at the time, was the chair of the music synthesis department at Berkeley. And um, I very quickly um, was able to leverage FileMaker and begin to use it in a way that was so powerful and meaningful to me um, that I've never um, stopped using it ever since. And this, my first use of FileMaker was in 1992. Um, our, you know, what we were looking at um, was a product that allowed flexibility, adaptability, um, that had some uh, uh, advantages in terms of rapid development um, and deployment uh, across campus. Um, and so we, we made the decision that we would go with, with FileMaker to do it. Remember, we were transferring a paper-based process into what is now a fully digitized applicant evaluation and assessment process. Um, and we're housing our data on a, on a um, secure remote server that we access um, in order to um, review our applicants to the college and, and uh, uh, for any, any number of queries we may have in terms of what our applicant pool is looking like. It may be a question of, of quality in terms of, well, what's the level of our applicant pool? We can report off of that using FileMaker. It might be, what's the demographic of our applicant pool? Are we getting, um, what percentage of our students are international? What percentage of our students are guitarists or bass players, um, et cetera, et cetera. So very quick and easy access to the, to the data on a platform that we essentially customized for our own use. And of course, Berkeley is a very uh, specific niche kind of market. We're looking at, at very particular criteria when we look at students who are applying to join our community. Um, and uh, we're using FileMaker to gather all of that data for us in a very, very comprehensive way. Um, in addition to the audition and, and interview data, of course, we're capturing the application itself and we're capturing um, academic transcripts um, and other demographic uh, data from the, from the pool. We have a very, at Berkeley, it's a fixed application deadline. Um, and our biggest class every year is the fall class, which starts in September. We have three semesters annually, one that begins in September, one that begins in January, and one that begins in May. But fall is by far our biggest pool. And we have an early action deadline of November 1, and then we have a regular, what we call a regular action deadline on January 15th. And these students um, are applying in, uh, to have a decision released by March 31st. So essentially, we have a very, very tight window um, to gather the data and, re and review it as a pool. The, the big advantage to FileMaker and the system that we're using now is, of course, that we're, we're kind of gathering this data as we go. So as we travel throughout the world and audition um, our applicant pool, that data is coming back to the to the mainframe, if you will, the, the central uh, server at the college, and we're able to compile, aggregate, assess the data um, as we go. So that by the time we finally get into the committee phase of the Board of Admissions sitting down and looking at, at all of our data, we have a very complete picture of our applicant pool at that point. I'm showing you a, a, a kind of a quick sketch of the current system that we use in terms of data and where the data is coming from. So in addition to FileMaker, which is, FileMaker is being primarily used to capture all of the assessment and evaluative 
data on the applicant. We also have an online application that's a SQL-based application. And that application syncs to FileMaker on an hourly basis so that we can see applications as they come in. And then, of course, we also have an enterprise system. Um, and we are looking at data from the enterprise system also um, in terms of application status and things like that to give us the complete picture on the student. So we're not, we're not running this system purely using FileMaker data only. We're using multiple sources, and that's something that, that FileMaker has been very easy to, um, to adapt to in terms of uh, linking to these various data sources. It's, it's a big advantage for us um, with the current system that we use. I think I mentioned earlier the first deployment of FileMaker was in 1992. And since then, it's, it's quite a large, sophisticated group of files. It's really the backbone of the, um, of the data that we use to evaluate and assess students for admission, not just for admission, but also for scholarship um, consideration. And also, we have quite a large student employment program um, that is run almost exclusively through uh, FileMaker in terms of matching students to positions and positions to students, et cetera. Here's a, uh, a quick view of, of a screen that we would see um, on campus when we're, when we're at home and, and logging into the server. So this, is, this uh, main screen showing is an audition evaluation screen. We're assessing students on a variety of um, areas in terms of their musicianship. Up at the top, there's some summary data in terms of um, where the student is from and uh, overall kinds of ratings in terms of the quality of the student. Um, this is a Korean student that auditioned with us when we visited Hamamatsu, Japan in February this year, um, and a very strong musician. If you look in the blue area, you'll see that there's a number of tabs, and each of these tabs houses detailed information on various aspects of the student's uh, uh, application, background, communication history. We, we log every communication with a prospect and applicant so that we can, we can review that history as we go. Some of our students will attend summer programs or shorter programs that we host um, when we travel on the road. And all of that data is captured so that we can see it in the student's history. And then we have various uh, tabs here that are more specific to a function. So um, a, a tab for applicant advisors, a tab for the board of admissions, a tab for counseling, et cetera. Um, so lots of different uh, data coming together here in the one place. Here's a screenshot of, of an old, uh, I'm sorry, the interview layout that is used, um, the detail layout for interviewing a student when we're trying to determine their fit for the college um, and ours to them. And here's a, uh, this is our on the road database. This is, um, you know, when we travel, uh, as you can see, this was for Hamamatsu in Japan, the, the trip that I mentioned earlier. So we're data entering into this database, and that data comes back um, to our central system. So on a nightly basis, what we're doing is submitting this data to um, uh, our auditions coordinators um, at the college. We have two dedicated personnel whose job it is to schedule and, and uh, uh, capture the data, upload it back into the exported out for on the road. When, when our teams are traveling, and then um, bring it back into the server for use by the Board of Admissions after all of the auditions and interviews have been complete. And this is just a, a typical iPad window, um, login window, where we would go to open up one of these on the road databases. So the, you know, the, Delivery of FileMaker Go, um, as I had mentioned to you, I, I've been a user of FileMaker ever since 1992. Um, and uh, I'll never forget the day, actually, that I, 
my one of my uh, tech people at Berkeley emailed me the link to FileMaker Go. I downloaded it on my iPad. I launched it and opened up our database on the server, and I was working like instantly, and it was it was so exciting. I was using layouts that we had built in our in our desktop um, product, uh, and really having no issues at all. The this is an interesting point about you know moving from the system that we built uh, in house and then taking that system on the road with us when we travel using our iPad. We've done very little to virtually no customization of those databases in terms of the layouts. Um, we're able to open up the database and use it instantly um, on the iPad just as we would if we were logging in from a desktop and, and going to the server. Um, so it's it's instant. You know, you, you can take a solution that um, you've built in house and instantly um, have users accessing it through FileMaker Go on the iPad, which is another uh, big advantage. Uh, this screen just talks a little bit about um, what I've been referencing in terms of how we sync the data back to the server. Um, so we have, you know, there's 150 sites in excess of 150 sites around the world. We're traveling to Asia, Latin America, all over the U.S., all over Europe, um, and having these audition and interview events, capturing the data um, on the road, and then uploading all of that data back into the central server um, for review by the Board of Admissions. Um, during that critical month month of March when we're, when we're making decisions on who our entering class will be um, for the upcoming fall semester in, in September. Um, this slide is talking about, you know, some of the advantages that um, I feel I clearly get from being a FileMaker user. You know, the you can imagine how labor-intensive the admissions process was prior to the digitization and capturing of all of this data. Um, and there's no question in my mind that I would need a much larger staff uh, than what I have now to get all of this work done. Uh, we have a huge volume of applications coming in. They're coming in online. They're being synced almost immediately with our FileMaker system. Um, and then we have um, very sophisticated scripts that are built to schedule uh, every applicant into an, an available slot. Uh, and we're very customer oriented, so we ask our applicants to give us their first choice for audition site and their second choice for audition site. Um, I would say 80% of the time we're able to meet first or second choice. Um, if not, we're going to invite you to our campus in Boston or in Valencia, Spain. Um, but the system is built in such a way as it runs through um, the first choice, and if a slot is available, uh, it, it assigns you that slot and sends you an invitation um, to audition and interview at that time and in that location uh, that you requested. Um, you know, I mentioned uh, uh, I think briefly before the live reporting, um, this is something that's very powerful, particularly for my team. Uh, we're all traveling almost constantly on the road and need to be in touch with the data from no matter where we are. Um, so literally at the push of a button, I can log in um, to FileMaker Go on my iPad and I can look at data on the server and, and make important decisions um, around how we're shaping our class, what the quality of the applicant pool looks like, um, uh, and any number of inquiries that we might have at that time um, in terms of what the, the demographics of our applicant pool uh, uh, looks like. Um, and this is something that I'm monitoring almost on a daily basis. Um, and again, FileMaker gives me that quick and easy access to that data. Um, in custom screens that we've built specifically for that purpose. 
um, so it's very user friendly. Um, the other important thing about FileMaker Go and using it on the iPhone and iPad is, you know, we have, for instance, in Boston, where about 50% of our applicants will audition. Um, on any given Saturday from November through March, we are welcoming as many as 300 students to our campus to do their audition and interview at Berkeley. It's a very um, intensive kind of day uh, for those students. It's a very important day in their lives. Many of them are applying to their first choice school. They want to go to Berkeley. It's Berkeley or bust for many of these. Um, kids, so it's very important for us that we have a very high touch, high quality experience for our applicants. Um, so when they show up at Berkeley, they're greeted at the door by a student ambassador holding an iPad, um, using FileMaker, and checking that student in um, as they arrive at the reception desk, which makes for a very warm welcoming kind of feeling for that student and their family. Um, and then when uh, it's time for that student to go to warm up before their audition, that same FileMaker system will display that student's name on a giant screen that's in our waiting area so that they can see, oh, it's my, t it's my time to go and warm up, and they, they're escorted by a student ambassador to their warm-up room. Um, so very... Uh, very high-end, very user-friendly, gives a very, very uh, high sense of professionalism for these audition and interview um, events. So going forward with FileMaker, um, uh, you know, we continue to see FileMaker as being a central part of, of, uh, of, of our toolkit at Berkeley in terms of um, the application process to the college. Um, we, we can see opportunities for further integration with our CRM, so we're going to be focusing on that in the upcoming year. Um, and with the ever-increasing number of applicants from throughout the world and the pressure that that puts on my team and our audition and interview process, um, we're looking at options to do online auditions and interviews, and thinking about ways that we can integrate our FileMaker system with the online audition and interviews so that there's easy access to the online meeting um, even as we document the audition and interview um, in FileMaker and feeding that data directly to our servers. So those are the two areas of focus for us in the upcoming year, um, leveraging FileMaker. Uh, you know, we continue to be um, uh, both impressed and relieved at how robust FileMaker is for Berkeley College of Music. It's really, um, I can't imagine that we would be where we are today without um, having leveraged FileMaker in, in, the, in the ways that we have. Um, and it's certainly meeting, it's, it's helping us meet all of our um, annual goals and, and the challenges that we put ahead of us. It's a core product for Berkeley. Um, and we look forward to continuing uh, to leverage FileMaker technology um, as, we, uh, as we develop our application process at Berkeley. So that's the end of the presentation portion. Um, I'd like to pass it back over uh, to Ryan for a Q&A session. Oh, thank you, Damien. That was a lot of excellent information and um, very inspiring. Um, I'd like to just remind everyone that now uh, is a great time to enter in your questions for uh, Ryan and Damien to address. Um, remember, all you have to do is click in the control panel, enter in your question, and hit send. And uh, why don't we go to the last slide and take a look at some of the um, FileMaker resources. Of course, you can download FileMaker Go for iPad or for iPhone for free uh, from the iTunes Store. And uh, we also have a lot of file, uh, free FileMaker Go resources available on the website. Um, you know, information about how to set up your databases, um, white papers, uh, video tutorials, and we even have um, lots of other web, and web seminars related to um, FileMaker Go and mobile devices. And uh, with that, I'd like to uh, hand it over to Ryan for the Q&A. Thank you. Thanks, and thanks to you, Damien. 
Uh, we've got lots of questions here. But let me start, Damien, by just having you step through uh, the process a little, in a little more detail, how it works where the information is moved, kind of gathered together, moved from a server out to people and back, because this is a, a lot of questions around that. So from my understanding, yeah. what happens is that you've got uh, a bunch of systems, uh, SQL type systems, and you're pulling information from those systems, as well as, I imagine, entering some information directly into FileMaker, and then you have a central database in a server, correct? And then you right. somehow extract information out of that and email it out to uh, your to uh, folks that are going on the road. How does that exactly work? Yeah, so um, it's all scripted. Um, so we're, we're we're not necessarily um, pulling data from SQL. We're we're viewing it live. Um, when it's time for uh, a audition team to go out on the road, an audition team is made up of two faculty members that run the audition, a board of admissions member who's running the interview portion of the day, and typically there's two student ambassadors or student alumni who are helping meet and greet the students and get them to their warm up, etc. But the data is simply an extract from our servers, so it's grabbing um, some of the uh, demographic data that's, that resides in the SQL database. Um, it's grabbing the audition schedule information um, in FileMaker and it's down, downloading it to a local file that's then emailed to the team and they take it out on the road. Um, on a nightly basis, they'll update, um, they'll, they'll send a, a copy of that database back to the auditions coordinators who then um, upload that information and update it in the server. Um, so it's actually, I mean, it's, it's quite simple. I mean, we, obviously we had to write the scripting to make sure that the correct data was being exported in the correct fashion. Um, but, um, it, you know, it, it's, it, it's gotten to the point now where it's simply, you launch the script, uh, the, the file is emailed to the, to the team leader, um, and then the file is sent back to the auditions coordinators as soon as they're done with it. And that way you can have information available each night. Correct. Um, yeah, and we're looking at this information on a daily basis. Do you, do you feel, here's a question about, okay, you're gathering a lot of this information together. Do you feel the need to archive past year's records or do you just prefer to have them accessible all the time? How are you handling the data over time? We keep five years of records in our, in our uh, data, in our suite. Um, so we, we'll archive anything that's past five years, but we do have all of that data um, accessible to us if we need to get to it. I had a couple of questions related to, you know, the, the troubles of traveling on the road. I mean, you go on the road a lot, so I'm sure you understand this. What happens if, oh, I don't know, someone were to lose an iPad, heaven forbid, and um, uh, do you have a way of sending the data back out? How do you handle that situation? Has that ever come up? I don't think anybody's ever lost an iPad, but I'm sure it's possible. It can happen. Um, I mean, you know, obviously everything is um, is uh, password protected, and um, not only the device itself, all Berkeley laptops and iPads and any Berkeley-owned device is um, is uh, password protected. Every database that we set out on the road is password protected. So. Um, we're not, uh, um, you know, we've, we've never had an incident that uh, has, has caused an issue for us in that regard. We have backups of everything. So, you know, if you're doing, of course, the great thing about FileMaker is that it saves your data as you go. Um, so, you know, it's been um, many, many years since we started doing this and, uh, We've been very, um, very fortunate. We've never had any major data break. Um, one of the questions, a lot of questions about how the mobile process works again. Um, how large are your databases on your mobile devices? Has, has this been a problem for you? And uh, someone was also asking about the sync process. So is it taking you a long time to email these databases out and get them back, or is that a pretty quick process overall? No, they're very manageable size files. Um, you know, on a, when we're traveling on the road, it's like 30, people a day is typically what we schedule. 
which is a very full day of auditions and interviews. Um, You're so only talking a few hundred records. Or... 90 records, you know, it's, it's nothing. These are small files. Someone wants to know about your use of tagging to help categorize the few students for future searches. I was looking in your, in your, um, uh, at your screen there, and you have a lot of different ratings and things. Is there any sort of a tagging process you're using as you're entering the information that helps kind of categorize, categorize the information? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's standard, what in the in the business what you would call enrollment management um, rating systems. You know, where we're looking at various aspects of, of the applicant. There's no question that at Berkeley the most, the driving force, um, as I'm sure is true with many other colleges, is the quality of that applicant. So in addition to the audition and interview, what's the quality of their academic record, you know, and, and what other accomplishments and achievements um, have they mentioned in their application. Um, I, I had another question here again about how you are doing this in-house. It says, do you have an in-house tech, tech managing and development and maintenance of your databases? So I guess in general they're asking, how, how do you develop and maintain your databases? Who is, who is doing what parts of the development and maintenance? Yeah, I have um, in the admissions office at Berkeley, we have two web developers that are responsible for file maker maintenance as well as development of, of um, online forms and, and other web products, web-based products that we would use. So yeah, I, uh, this is, um, as you can imagine, it's a crucial core piece of the business. And it's critical that we have people um, in-house. And when I say in-house, I mean in the Office of Admissions, not in our IT department, although our IT department will support us as necessary, obviously. but. Um, you know, we, it's critical using a system like this that you have expertise on the ground that can uh, uh, address any issues that might come up on a daily basis and or, um, you know, uh, tweak things as we go. If we, see, if we see an opportunity to improve the database in some way, we can do it right there and then. Yeah, that's one of the, the neat things about FileMaker is that you can bring a consultant to do heavy work, but it's still, you have the ability to make those quick uh, changes. Um, yeah, I should mention, Eric, you know, that we, we have used for larger product projects, like for instance, um, scheduling all these thousands of auditions and interviews. Um, we brought in a team called the Support Group. They're local here in Boston. Um, and so they've been a tremendous help. So, you know, we will definitely when needed, um, bring in outside consulting to develop the product. I have a couple of questions here that I'll take here. One of them is, um, can we use the forms that are already built in FileMaker Pro on the iPad? Yes, you can. Uh, when uh, FileMaker has a number of what are called starter solutions included, and these are, you could think of them as templates. They're maybe a little more advanced than just a typical simple template. They have scripts and things associated with them. But then they have a bunch of different screens, and they're for different tasks that you might find important, such as managing project or managing inventory. And all of those starter solutions have um, screens built in there for the iPad or iPhone. So whether you use those screens or not, they're a good way to learn how those screens ought to look. And furthermore, they're um, a good starting point if you want to use those and build out from there. Another question is, can we view FileMaker data from a web browser? There are a number of ways to do it. And um, uh, one way is what's called instant web publishing, which comes off of uh, a FileMaker where it's generating the web pages for you. So you, you publish a screen. Um, it'll, it'll take a screen that you have, generate web pages. You'll probably want to adjust that screen, probably build a layout, as it's called, or a screen. Uh, uh, or a form for the browser, but you can publish information that way. And there's also custom web publishing. I'm curious to know, um, and that's where you build using coding techniques like PHP and you connect to FileMaker. Damien, have you done any work integrating the web with FileMaker in any of your process? Uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> um, oh man, now I'm trying to remember what year this was, but as early as the late 90s, um, I was uh, using FileMaker and Lasso um, to develop a, uh, an online application for, at that time, what was called the World Scholarship Tour. So 
people would would log in online and, and submit applications using CloudMaker, and that's 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 a long time ago. Um, we're not using CloudMaker right now at Berkeley for um, web-based applications, um, but it's certainly not ruled out by any means. We're so I imagine today that the applications flow through a web interface into a SQL database, and then from there, those those come uh, the data flows into FileMaker as appropriate. Is that is that how that works? That's exactly right. Okay, that's great. Um, uh, here's a question, and this is a hard one to answer. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll try winging it at you because you've been working in FileMaker for so long. But what was the biggest challenge in in, in, in implementing FileMaker? Um, uh, any parts of it? Was there was there a challenge in let's say connecting to SQL, or was there a challenge in um, in, in building up your screens? Where, where would you say if you were new to FileMaker, you you know you might want to you know, what the extra challenge would be? Um. You know, I think like any other product, FileMaker has its kind of quirks about it. Um, mm -hmm. So I think you need to um, put the time in up front, especially if you're a new user with FileMaker, to take advantage of the the online courses, um, uh, of, of which there are many. Um, take advantage of the FileMaker website itself because it's a fantastic resource. Um, uh, and uh, but, but stick to it because I can tell you that, um, you know, I've had, I've had a lot of exposure to a lot of different kinds of technology, um, and FileMaker can do so much more. I, I I would say that, you know, at Berkeley, we're really pushing the envelope with FileMaker. We're using it for some very very sophisticated. Um, uh, Kinds of processes um, uh, that are really, you know, critical to the school, but it's well able to manage them. You, you just need to, and you know, the other thing that I learned down the road is don't be shy about bringing in a consultant when you know uh, when you need to. I think it's um, uh, there's a lot of good um, filemaker consulting out there. We're very fortunate to have the support group here in. In Boston, they've been a great help to Berkeley, and you know, at Berkeley, often things are on. You know, we have a limited window of time to accomplish uh, tasks in terms of FileMaker development. So, you know, if something is really significant, um, we'll we'll bring in some additional help to do that. It's not that we couldn't do it ourselves. It's just that, you know, we're like everybody else. We want it yesterday. We don't we don't want to have to wait to have it. Well, we, we just have time for a few more questions. Here's a, here's one. How how are your new employees being trained how to use FileMaker? You've built the system. What do you have to do to train someone to use it? Well, Berkeley has a um, – my staff in particular have a, a kind of an onboarding process that walks all new staff through um, the systems and, uh, you know, even, even beyond FileMaker, you know, what – what it is to be in uh, that particular role that they that they may have been hired to fill, but FileMaker is certainly um, a uh, a core component for every one of my staff at Berkeley. Um, and like I mentioned before, we have two technical people um, that can sit down and do more technically oriented training for folks, and then we have something that we call you know a shadow system. Or you will sit down with an experienced staff member and walk through the processes and learn the system that way. And is most of the learning how to use FileMaker, or is it more learning what the process itself is typically? We don't, you know, we've built our system in such a way as that very few people at, uh, who work for me actually know how to use FileMaker. <laughs> You know, they're using it on a daily basis, but we try to make that as transparent to them as possible. That's the goal, isn't it? Make it as simple as possible so they're yeah, just using exactly, the yeah. So they're, they're just accessing data. You know, they give us great feedback because they'll talk about data flow and, and field views and, and things like that that we can then address. And I have the level of expertise to address those issues as they come up. But we just try to make it as simple for them to access the data 
as they possibly can because then they become more productive. I've just got time. We'll just do two more questions. I've got one I'll answer, and then I'll, I'll pass one more to you. One, a person asked me uh, uh, um, about publishing on the web. I had mentioned that earlier, and asked, could it be, if you publish on the web, are you required to publish all your information, or can you limit it? And you have a lot of control over that. In FileMaker in general, you can set up views or screens or, uh, that are read-only. You can set up uh, ones where uh, people can update information. You can set it by different people having different uh, you know, diff access to different information. That same sort of thing applies on the web. You can have a browser, a screen that you can just read information. You can't even enter anything into it. Or you can, you can limit it in many different ways. So FileMaker is very flexible um, in, in that fashion. Um, one of the, um, uh, the, the, the questions that people wanted to know about was um, how, how, um, how long did it take you to move your solution to the iPad? Um, did you have a lot of development to do, or were you just able to run it right away? No, that was the beauty of it. I literally, you know, when FileMaker Go came out, I downloaded it. I was in my kitchen at home, I remember, because it was a big moment for me. <laughs> Um, I downloaded uh, uh, FileMaker Go and logged into the server um, at Berkeley, and off I went. I was using the exact same layouts um, and interfacing in, in the way that I normally would. So that's the you know what we currently don't have at Berkeley is a customized iPad version um, of our data. We're simply accessing the the database in the, in the way that you would on your desktop. But it was, I mean, there was literally no um, development work switching from the desktop to the iPad. It was just another device, another means of accessing the data. That, that's fantastic. And, and you know, in, in many cases, people want to develop a custom screen for the iPad, and you can and you should. But in your particular case, it's working for you, so no, 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 uh, no issue. Well, I'm sure I, I really people are very disappointed in the fact that I haven't done that. But um, why are they disappointed? Because they just want a, a different screen, or uh, they just the concept of it, or yeah, I'm I'm saying some of our some of our listeners today may maybe oh, some of your listeners oh, customize it, but you know we have um, it, it does work very well for us. Um, it, I'm sure it would be we could make it prettier, and uh, you know make it a little bit slicker, but um, we haven't gotten there yet. Well, I think the main goal is, is and w w what we strive for at FileMaker, is to provide flexibility. I mean, that's one of the hallmarks of FileMaker. Yes. If you, you want to do custom development on the iPad, iPhone, we're there. We have starter solutions. We have training. You don't, you don't have to. Um, I'd like to uh, mention one last thing here uh, for everyone, which is you know, people ask, where can I learn more about FileMaker? Uh, again, there's a lot of good resources on the FileMaker website. One thing you might want to be aware of is something called the Technical Network, or TechNet. It's a free program that anyone can sign up to on the FileMaker website. And it gives the person, if you sign up for it, you'll have access to a whole bunch of information, a, a custom forum just for people developing in FileMaker. They're, they're, you'll have access to all these files and training materials. Uh, there's also a site in, on the FileMaker website that covers training. So if you wanted to get some training, you wanted to take learn by video, or you wanted to go to a class or buy a book, there's a whole bunch of content up there on, on, on where you can get training and how to, how to get it. So there's a lot of different ways to learn FileMaker, and if you get started now, maybe you'll be like Damien and, and still be getting a lot of value out of FileMaker, uh, what, 20, 30 years on. So um, Damien, again, really appreciate your time today. Uh, you're doing sure, some great work there at, at Berkeley, and you're making great use of FileMaker, and, and uh, as you say, you're, you're using it to help bring more music to the world, and, and I think that's a, a, great, a great goal, and, and you're achieving it. Yeah, and thanks to FileMaker. It's been a great resource. Okay.